So if you didn't have an airway, that would be a problem. Or if you had a blocked airway, you wouldn't be able to breathe, which could potentially be a problem as well. So because airway is so important and vital to life, it is one of the primary objectives when we are treating a medical patient or a victim of trauma. We have to make sure these patients have open airways. So we're gonna talk a little bit about anatomy and physiology of the airway, and then what we can do to help that patient maintain an open airway. Okay, so before we actually jump into managing an airway, there's a couple anatomical terms I want to go over and discuss a little bit of anatomy um, so that as we progress through this and we talk about the anatomy, you understand some of the terms that we're using. So first off, when you take a breath in through your nose, you have a nasal passage that goes to the back of your throat. That is called your nasopharynx. When you take a breath in through your mouth, the passage from your mouth to the back of your throat is called the oropharynx. These two passages meet at the back of your throat in a place called the pharynx. From there, there's only two places that air or food or anything in your mouth can go. One is your trachea, that's your windpipe that sits on the very front of your throat. The second passageway is your esophagus. That is a softer passageway toward the back of your throat that opens up when you swallow food, allows that food to pass down into the stomach. So if we're ventilating a patient and we are giving them a breath, either with a barrier device or a BVM, that breath, once it enters into their mouth or nose, can only go two places. And if we don't have an open airway and keeping that trachea open and keep the tongue off the back of the throat and make it just a perfect area for that air to move through the trachea, it's gonna to default to the secondary location, which is the esophagus. Now, if we pump a bunch of air into the esophagus, it goes down to the stomach, it inflates the stomach, and at some point, that pressure's gotta go somewhere. That pressure's gonna be relieved in the form of vomit, which is not only nasty for you, but dangerous for the patient. So we want to maintain an open airway for these patients. One more term I wanna talk about is the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a little flap that sits on top of your trachea. So when you swallow food or water, that epiglottis will close over the trachea, allow you to swallow, allow the food to pass by and go down into the esophagus without going into the trachea. If you ever swallow water and you start coughing and you say it went down the wrong pipe, that is because it bypassed that epiglottis in some form, it got down into the lungs a little bit um, and your body's natural response is to cough that up to get that out of there because it's not supposed to be down in there. So those are the main terms I wanted to go over before we move into managing an airway patient. So when we're talking about managing an airway for a medical or trauma patient, there's two main things that we want to be concerned with. One is we want to keep that airway and that neck midline. So we don't want the head flopping one way or another or flopping over. We want to keep that airway up and keep it open. The second thing we need to be concerned about is the tongue. Tongue is just a large muscle. And when we're responsive, that tongue stays toward the front of our mouth. We're using it to talk, to swallow everything else. But in an unresponsive patient, we lose that muscle tone and that tongue will just relax. It's gonna relax to the back of the throat and it's gonna start occluding the airway. So it's important for us now to use positional techniques or other devices to help keep that tongue off the back of the throat, open the airway, allow air to pass back and forth without having any resistance. If we keep that airway open to the trachea, then it's much less likely that we're gonna have that air go into the esophagus, down into the stomach where we don't want it. So if you have a patient that can maintain their own airway, that is the best scenario. So if they have any blood or trauma to their mouth, or even if they're vomiting, if they can lean forward, any of that blood or secretions or vomit will now be expelled by gravity out of their mouth rather than running back down their throat. So you don't wanna take a responsive patient, lay them flat on their back, and then you start managing their airway. If they can maintain their own airway, that is preferred. They're gonna be able to maintain that a lot better and understand what's going on and be able to breathe um, by having them lean forward. So if they're choking, have them try to cough that up. If they can't cough, then you move into choking measures. But if there's a slight airway obstruction, them coughing up or them leaning forward is the best thing you can do for that patient right then. So when we're talking about an unresponsive patient and we're managing this airway, there's two main manual maneuvers we can do to open that airway and displace that tongue, keeping the air flowing through the pharynx. The first one we're gonna do is called a head tilt chin lift. We tilt the head back and we put fingers up under the chin and we ch lift that chin up in the air. This is gonna put this trachea more in a natural position. Now the jaw thrust maneuver is where we take our fingers and we will put them right behind the jaw line here. 
right underneath the ears. On both sides, we're gonna take this and we're gonna push up. Everything that's attached to the jaw, including the tongue, now gets displaced up. It pushes the tongue out of the airway and allows the air to pass between it. Between these two maneuvers, the head tilt chin lift is gonna open the airway more than the jaw thrust. But if we're worried about neck compromise, we don't wanna be manipulating the head on these patients. So we do want to take some care there and we'll use the jaw thrust maneuver to displace that airway. So rather than having to manually open this airway the entire time, there are a couple adjuncts or devices that we can use to keep this airway open. One is an NPA. This is a nasopharyngeal airway. The other one we're gonna talk about is the OPA. This is an oral pharyngeal airway. This goes in the mouth and this sits in the back of the throat and the tongue will sit on top of here, but there are these channels that run down here. So even if the tongue is sitting on top of it, this helps pick the tongue up a little bit, but also it has channels that allow the air to pass by the tongue. So OPA and MPA. So we're gonna go over how to put down an MPA. This is a MPA or a nasopharyngeal airway. I've got a size 28 French, which is a pretty common size. It's kind of the one size fits most for most average adults. Um, the proper way to size up the MPA, MPA here is to measure from the nose to the earlobe. Um, and that will give you an estimated size for that patient. Um, but we're gonna be using a uh, 28 on this. That's the most common size. Uh, the MPAs that we sell come with a lube packet attached to them that that will be together because you will need this lube to be able to put down this MPA. So let me go ahead and open this up. MPA slides out, looks just like this. It's a hollow tube with a flange on one side. It's got a bevel on the other side. This will go down into the patient's nose the bevel goes toward the septum. I'm gonna slide that down in there, but first we need to apply a little bit of lube uh, to make this go down um, a little easier. So I've got a lube packet. I'll open up this packet, a little bit of lube on here, slide that down. Now, when I insert this, I'm gonna insert this into the right nair first, unless there's a deviated septum, for some reason I have to go to the left, but I'm gonna try the right first. Bevel toward the septum, slide it straight down into the nostril, give it a little twist as we go to help spread that lube and help it work in there. And then we'll slide it all the way up, all the way till the flange is to the nose. Um, these may start sliding out over time, so we may want to put a little piece of tape just over the upper lip here and just catch the corner of that flange to help hold that into place. But this MPA will go back around to the back of the throat, up underneath the tongue, and that will help um, air pass from the nose back behind the tongue if the tongue is falling on the back of the throat like that. So, okay, so we're gonna talk about sizing up the OPA. I've got several different sizes here. And the way that we're gonna size this up is we're going to uh, measure the OPA from the earlobe to the corner of the mouth. So obviously this is much larger than this patient needs. So let's try this red one. This one is about right. So from the earlobe to the corner of the mouth is where this OPA um, runs. And so we know that this is right for the patient. So when we apply this uh, OPA, we are going to slide this in sideways in the mouth. We're gonna hook into the mouth between the tongue and the roof of the mouth, go in um, about two thirds of the way, and then we'll rotate this down the curvature of the mouth, and this will sit all the way up against the teeth here. So when we're maintaining an airway, it's important not only to keep that airway open to allow the patient to breathe, but we also want to minimize aspiration. And aspiration is when we have vomit, blood, really anything else that gets down to the trachea and down to the lung. So if you have a patient that's unresponsive and they begin to vomit, the best thing you can do for them is to roll them into what is called the recovery position. So with the recovery position, we're now gonna roll the patient onto the left or right side. This allows gravity now to work to our advantage for any blood or vomit to drain out of the airway rather than draining back into the airway. So as we roll into the left or to the right, we're gonna use their arms to prop up their head so their head is off the ground so it's not gonna be sitting in any vomit or blood here on the ground. Their legs are gonna sit in this position so that we make sure they don't roll back over onto their back. So with this position right here, we can maintain an airway that has secretions of blood or vomit or something else in their airway and use gravity to our advantage. So before we close, I wanna talk quickly about pediatrics or children. There's a few anatomical differences differences in anatomy between children and adults. One is their head is much larger proportionally to their body than in adults. So because it's larger, there is more weight and that can easily push their airway one way or another and occlude their airway. So when we have a patient laying or a child laying on their back, 
that larger head is also gonna push that head up more and it's gonna have a greater chance of occluding that airway. So one thing we can do for these children is we can slide something under their shoulder blades. So if they're laying flat on the ground, their head is pushed forward. If we lift their shoulder blades up now, it'll allow the head to extend back a little bit more, keeping that airway more in line. So we can roll up a towel, fold up a shirt, something to slide under their shoulders and reposition everything and keep that airway open. Children also don't have fully developed bones and cartilage yet. Their, their bones and cartilage are much softer. So their airway is much softer. So with that big head pushing on their airway, their airway is gonna be a lot more flexible. So it's much easier to collapse and occlude that airway. So we want to pay special attention to the positioning in these pediatrics. The last point on anatomy is the trachea in the pediatrics is cone shaped. The very top of it is like a cone. An adult is straighter and a child's is more like a cone. So if a child has a choking hazard and gets something occluded in their airway, it will block off that airway very easily. But likewise, you can usually invert the child, use some back slaps between the shoulder blades to be able to dislodge that item much easier in a cone shaped airway than you would in an adult's straight airway. So there are some differences between pediatrics and adult, and I at least wanted to go over those to make you aware of them. So that's a quick rundown of airway anatomy and also basic management of the airway. These are very important principles. Airway is very important to maintain and one of the primary things that we need to do with a patient. This does not take place of any formal training, so make sure you go get some formal training in BLS, first aid, EMR, EMT, get some form of training so that you can understand these things better and be able to help out people in this way. But we wanted to at least put out a quick video that went over some of the basics of it. You can find more of our training videos on our YouTube channel. We also have some of this information on our website at sixecosystems.com. On our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to us because we put out content all the time. So you'll get notifications when we have new videos that come out. And any of the videos that you find helpful, uh, give us a like, leave us a comment, tell us what you found helpful because your feedback will help shape what we do in the future and what kind of content we put out for you. So that's all for today. Stay vigilant, stay safe.